Are we in? Uh, oh, wow, yeah, we are in. I, I didn't realise that the uh, attendees was going up. See who we've got in here. Oh, I can see some names in here. Here we go. Hello, Leslie. Kevin, good to see you. Jill, Karen, Sarah, good to see you. Sharon, Ruth, <clears throat> Andreas, Anne. Hi, Anne. Anne, Anne, who's just got a publishing deal. Yes, yes, congrats, congrats Anne. Congrats. congrats. Yeah, yeah, well done, Anne. Well done, Anne. Brilliant. Congratulations. Joe Singleton, great to see you, Joe. How oh, Elodie. Hi, good to see you. Look at this. They're flying in. Lovely. Well, I hope you're all settled down. I hope you're all uh, ready to go. We'll give another couple of minutes for, uh, for people to come in. Um, just time for a little cheers to you all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good enough. As you'll see, oh, there's Dave Graham. How are you yes. doing, Dave? As you'll see, we're not we're not alone this evening. Not in an X file sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't worked out what kind of story we're doing yet. I suppose. <laughs> true. Very true. <laughs> Hello, I see, and Catherine and Kathy, Claire. David. Hi, Alex. I saw my man Alex earlier today. Good to see you, man. I told him I'd do a covert cheers for him, but that was a bit more direct. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Well, when do you, shall I give this, shall I get this going? Get it um, going, Rob. Let's go. Get it going. Excellent stuff. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Who's Crime 6. How have we got here? God only knows. Uh, this is the, uh, the sixth instalment of the frankly ridiculous hour of crime fun hosted by me, Rob Parker, as I attempt to wrangle a merry troop of the nation's finest crime writers into coming up with a bestseller in under an hour. We've got regulars Chris McGeorge for Owner Erskine, Trevor Wood, Judith O'Reilly, Rob Scragg and Adam Peacock. And this week, can you believe it? We have got a couple of additional lambs to the slaughter. I mean, guests. Ah, lovely gag there, thank you. Yes, that's what we're supposed <clears throat> to call them, isn't it? Yeah, can I firstly introduce David Fennell and Howard Linsky. How are you both this evening? So, very well, thanks. David, I'm very well, thanks. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, David, I wonder whether you could, uh, just for those uh, who've, well, who, uh, who are joining us in the audience um, who might not be familiar with yourself, could you just give us a quick uh, little bit about yourself? Well, that would be a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, um, uh, my name is David Fennell. Um, I am the author of The Art of Death. Um, it's my crime debut, um, which has just been published. Um, it's, the, it's a serial killer thriller um, set in central London. And it's about a serial killer who um, uses social media to catfish his victims. Um, and he captures them and then he he displays them as art you know uh, just a normal thing uh, <laughs> you know. as you do. Yeah. fabulous fabulous um I'm, and i'm hearing rave reviews about this book absolutely everywhere so i um, hope it flies david um howard Thank what you. about yourself you. could you uh, could you uh, define yourself briefly for our audience <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, <be> all night. <laughs> I'll try. Um, I'm Howard Linsky. I'm an author, originally from the northeast of England, and that's where my books are usually set. I have written all kinds of things, um, as you no doubt know, Rob, <laughs> including books about beer, for example. But um, <laughs> mostly, mostly I write crime fiction uh, for for Penguin, and the one I've got out currently is Alice Teal is missing, which um, does what it says on the tin that title because she is. She's, uh, oh, there you go. Thanks for, honor, <laughs> for advertising. I, why didn't I think of that? Um, <laughs> about, about a 17 year old girl who goes missing when she leaves school one evening because she stayed behind. And um, I guess if I give anything else away, it's a spoiler, but detectives have to find out if she's really missing, if she's alive, if she's dead, what's happened to her. Fabulous. Thank you. And thank you. Just both. been likened in the chat, Howard, to Tom Cruise. Yes. Oh, that has to be Anne, bless her. It is. <laughs> it is. It is. Thinks that. My, my daughter, I tell her every time, and she dies laughing. <laughs> oh, well, like thank booze, you. The booze cruise and Tom Cruise. And thank <laughs> thank you, you both. Well done, on the, well done on the publication, Delan. Delighted yeah. for you. Thrilled. That's brilliant. Brilliant. And thank you both very much for uh, taking time out of your Tuesday, Tuesday to join us this evening. Appreciated hugely. Um, 
audience, you, you know how this is going to work pretty much. Um, but for those who've never been here before, um, I'll give you a quick rundown. If you want to tweet about us, please tweet hashtag one hour blockbuster. If you want to ask questions of our, um, well, any of our authors, but especially Davy and Howard, um, please pop them in the Q&A at the bo bottom here. You'll see a number of boxes at the bottom of your Zoom screen. There's a Q&A box. If you click that and pop a question in there, I'll, uh, once we've created our blockbuster, I'll refer to that to ask a question of these fine gentlemen later. Um, also, the other one is, as a number of you have worked out, is the chat box on the left-hand side. That is for interacting with the questions that I am going to ask of you. Um, and we're going to come up with a blockbuster just on the fly, all of us. Um, and it will be, I reckon, what, have we got time to get a, a major publishing deal and get it in, in Tesco by, by summer, possibly? <laughs> possibly not. We'll aim for <laughs> summer 2022, possibly. Um, but I'm going to ask you a series of questions answer off, off the cuff. I go with your gut every time. More often than not, you, your best answer is your very first one. So let's have a bit of fun. I think every story pivots and mutates from the very same place, which is character. It's always the start point. Um, so we need someone. We need a person. Um, I am going to ask... Howard, I'm going to go to you straight away, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give me a, a, a name? Any first name on the planet? Okay, I'm going to go for Belinda. Belinda, excellent stuff. And Davey, can I have an age? Any, na any age you can think of? 55. Belinda is 55. Brilliant. And audience, please, can you tell me what her job or role in life is? We've got ballet dancer, dog washer, nurse, vet, <laughs> cat sitter, <laughs> killer, we've got from Leslie Torrell. Hi, Assassin. Leslie. There's some, I mean, this is, it writes itself. Come on. This is amazing. <laughs> Therapist. Right. Um, of all those there, Adam, Adam Peacock, how are you this evening? Please, could you pick one? Um, I'm very well. Thank you very much. <laughs> see, man. With, uh, ventriloquist. Which, Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping you were going to choose that one. <laughs> Belinda is a 55-year-old ventriloquist. I'm already invested here, to be honest. Um, now, I'm going to try something a little bit different now because I want to know, just for myself, really, how place influences character. So, uh, Judith, please, could you give me any place on planet Earth? Manchester. Manchester. Oh, I'm very, yeah, feel a little bit, this might have an autobiographical <laughs> tint for me if I was a 55-year-old ventriloquist. <laughs> um, fantastic. Right, we're in Manchester. Let's go back to character. Um, Fiona, what is um, Belinda's place of birth? Wigan. Wigan, excellent. Oh, pie country. Excellent stuff. Love it. Um, and... Um, let's look into a little bit about them. Trevor, are they competitive? Is Belinda competitive? Uh, fiercely. 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 Yeah. Um, and uh, Chris, Chris McGeorge, how are you this evening? I'm um, good, thank you. Good. <laughs> Not for much longer. <laughs> oh, great. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. When was the last time Belinda said, I love you? Um... Uh, she's never said it and meant it. The last time she said it was through the mouth of a cartoon sheep <laughs> that she was uh, trying to ventriloquize for a tour <laughs> in Blackpool. I mean, you don't <laughs> just get... If that's not already a word, here, it should be. You get made-up words here. I mean, this, <laughs> this is fabulous. <laughs> Rob, Rob, I think the sheep needs a name, mate. Sheep needs a name. Audience, can we have a name for the sheep, please? First one I see is the one that gets it. Dolly. Dolly. It. <laughs> Dolly is Dolly the sheep. Said I love you. <laughs> what show is this she does? <laughs> um, fabulous stuff. Uh, Rob. Rob Sprague, how are you, man? I'm um, good, thanks. Could I ask you what? Um, I think he said what Dolly's greatest fear is. She's a, <laughs> she's a, she's a stuffed sheep. Uh, what is Belinda's greatest fear? Uh, her greatest fear. So she actually she uh, she believes that some of her ventriloquist dummies actually um, have um, minds of their own, and her greatest fear is that they take over the act. Ooh. It writes itself. You know, when you get the greatest minds, and I'm including you here, audience, it just it rolls off the tongue here. 
Um, Davy, what is uh, Belinda's hairstyle? Let's get a bit of a, a visual look. What was that? Sorry? Sorry, whose hairstyle? Belinda, the ventriloquist. Belinda. <clears throat> she has a um, bleached afro. Excellent. Excellent. Um, <laughs> Davey, were you thinking it was the sheep for a second there? <laughs> Could have been, yeah, yeah. Curly perm, I think. I'm thinking <laughs> curly perm. Trevor, what colour is the, uh, the bleach? What colour is it bleached? I thought bleach was always white. Is that just me? Is it not blonde? <laughs> oh, can it be? Oh, no, so I th I'm thinking of it being coloured, aren't I? Sorry, yeah, it's, so, it's bleach, so it's a blonde. You see? You see? I'm learning all the time. I might be wrong, mate, I think, but I think that's how. No, it no, I think you're right, Trevor. <laughs> uh, it's a trick question. He threw the trick question to me. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, Fiona, what is um, Belinda's favourite band? Well, she's a bit of a Northern Soul fan. Oh, um, nice. So probably the Tams or, Jesus. I don't know, Bobby Hebbs, something like that, Al Wilson. Al Wilson. Wow. Should we go for Al Wilson? Let's go for that. Marvellous. Marvellous. Um, I said there's a bit of a, a, a vintage chic to our Belinda, I feel, here. I thought it's a vintage sheep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's that too. Yeah. <laughs> um, nice and easy one. Adam, Cormor or Vindaloo for our, our Belinda? Belinda the Vindaloo. <laughs> But the, oh, so, uh, yeah, I'm please. call me myself because the Vindaloo will run rampant with me insides. But um, Vindaloo and Belinda's the case, I think. <laughs> Dolly's more of a call my sheep, though. Yes, yeah, obviously, obviously. And then can we just assume that in the restaurant when she rings up to order, they call her Belinda Lou? Can we just let's make sure we've got that? <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Um, there's a picture up in her bedroom audience. What is it of? I always, whenever I throw the, something like that, something bedroom related to the audience, the stuff that you get back. <laughs> Dear me, there's some suggestions here. <laughs> oh my God. Call a chameleon. I like that. Jimmy uh, Savile. <laughs> Jimmy Savile was a good chat. <laughs> is it? <laughs> She's from Manchester. That's his neck of the woods, isn't it? It makes sense no, to me. Oh. Who's Chad Bickerswade? Oh, well, same place. Uh, yeah, who is Chad Bickerswade? And why is he nude on this photograph? <laughs> <laughs> Corma Chameleon, very good, Leslie. Um, c Howard, could you pick one from that we've had there, please? Oh, I think Corma Chameleon is definitely very good. Some sort of uh, <laughs> cartoon of Boy George eating a curry. Boy George eating a curry. Excellent. Oh, Rob, I think Chad Bickerswade, wasn't he the, the hero or protagonist of one of our previous novels? Was he? We have definitely had a Chad, yeah. yeah. I, I, thought, I, I can't remember the surname, though. Oh my word. He came from Danny Marshall and he remembers everything, so I think it's, it's probably right. Um, I've just had a little note from Sharon. Hiya, F.E., all right, uh, saying that um, she can't see Jimmy Savile. That's usually a good thing, but I think that means that the, um, <laughs> the message has been sent to us via the um, all panellists and attendees. So it, just a panellist you might have messaged. So we know what, in the chat, when you say who it's to, make sure it's two panellists and attendees. Sorry, that's me. Rob, is that six for six of me forgetting to mention that, I think? I think it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect record. It always comes up to bite us. Fantastic. So we're going again. Um, Chris, what about pets? Does Belinda have any pets? Or are the, are the ventriloquist sheep enough for her? Uh, yeah, she has no pets, uh, similarly, because uh, she thinks they'll talk back as well. <laughs> so I'm seeing and sensing a little, um, there's an imbalance here in Belinda. There's a little bit of something going on here. Delicately put. <laughs> you know, which, yeah, well, what was the giveaway, Rob, you know? <laughs> um, right. Uh, Judith, what would um, Belinda ask a fortune teller? She'd ask a fortune teller if uh, she was ever going to get her own TV series because she grew up on um, Rod Hud. Is that, is that right, Rod Hud? Rod Hull. Rod Hull. And um, she wants to be famous. Oh, um, I, I'm going to just roll with this a second. So is this, um, uh, Howard, is this a recent tilt at fame or is this a lifelong thing of Belinda's? 
I think um, Belinda thinks that fame and riches will help her achieve her ultimate ambition, which is revenge. <laughs> <laughs> just throw that grenade in there and let you. I, love it. I was going to just, I've got here, as the audience knows, I've got a list of um, crime writer cliches. Revenge wasn't one of them, <laughs> but I'm adding it. <laughs> I thought that's what we were doing. I thought we were writing a crime book between us. So yeah, I thought, no, yeah. Not just some weird Sorry, did I miss it? Was it a romance or something? <laughs> <laughs> did, I, did I not read the joining instructions correctly? <laughs> <laughs> Apologise. <Yes. laughs> we, we get together once a week to come up with a ventriloquist biography, mate. That's all we do. <laughs> um, right. Uh, <laughs> revenge. Hold that thought on revenge for a moment. Um, David, what about this person's education? What about Belinda's education? Um, how far did she take her education? Or did she not? Which did she learn the hard way on the Blackpool ventriloquist circuit? Is that me? Sorry. Oh, I said Davy, sorry. I said yeah. Davy. <laughs> well, Davy was channeling the ventriloquist there for a second. <laughs> can, can he hear me? He's had <laughs> enough. He's gone. <laughs> He's frozen in terror. <laughs> sorry. We'll get David back in a moment. We'll get him back frozen. in a moment. Um, <laughs> sorry. Rob, I'll ask the same. Rob Scrag, I'll ask the same uh, question of you. Uh, she wasn't originally from the UK. She was sorry. She was born in Wigan, but her, her parents didn't speak English, so she actually went to um, to kind of like a, um, a foreign language school, like for the um, for kind of foreign exchange students. Oh, excellent. Excellent stuff. Interesting. Um, and um, by the way, I hear that school was heavily unionized, which was very nice to hear. <laughs> 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 One for the, you know, for the completionists out there. <laughs> um, Trevor, is, is Belinda glass, glass half full, glass half empty? Uh, very much half empty. Oh, dear. Pessimism. Yeah, which, when aligned with her deep competitiveness, is quite frightening, I think. And especially with a, um, a, a mind that is bent on revenge. Exactly. I do like it. I do like it. Um, we'll just... We'll is stop. She, can, I, can I just check? Of Rob, course. Is she bent on revenge, or is Dolly bent on revenge? Uh, <laughs> I think this is it, isn't it? Um, Fiona, could you make that call for us, please? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I, obviously she's conflicted, because she's, you know, she's becoming her characters but you know i think i think, I think dolly dolly has some yeah dolly would like to get revenge as well i think they kind of mix in the two this is fabulous um so dolly has sort of is kind of like there's a um a fracture of belinda's personality that has dolly has this sort of revenge bent um uh, Joe Singleton, Singleton says that Dolly is still looking for Jolene. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, well, there we it's, go. Ob obviously, Dolly's a clone, you see, so she's not. Oh, know, yes. Um, I think what if, what if she had a, a pet sheep as a child called Dolly? Ah. Uh, and, is, and, she, and uh, Dolly, Dolly, the ventriloquist dummy, is looking for revenge for whatever happened to the original Dolly all those years who, ago. Who ended up in a coma, which is now. <laughs> <laughs> now immortalized in the post yeah. with boy george yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love how it all knits <laughs> it just does doesn't it i mean chris did and, you mean and, did you mean coma curry or did she had, dolly ended up on the co the coma ward at the hospital uh, yeah. <laughs> oh very good no no matter how much this feels like it's jumped the shark it will still never be as as wild as our the assassination by tiger story of a, <laughs> <laughs> a few weeks. I forgot about that one. <laughs> yeah, because um, obviously throwing a tiger off a trapeze act is how you kill someone in a circus. Um, last question for Belinda before we move forward. If they were a ghost, and uh, Davy, I'm going to ask you this if that's all right. Um, if they were a ghost, who would they come back and haunt? Who would they come back and haunt? <clears throat> um... Okay, uh, that's a really good question. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you asked me it. <laughs> I'm, I'm very, I'm very, Anton Deck. 
this, this, now I'm seeing something about, you know, like, um, sorry, that sounded a bit like I was a medium, you know, now I'm seeing something, I'm seeing Uncle John in the front row, you know, um, <laughs> no, I'm seeing something like um, a failed visit to a TV Good talent Uncle, show, an Aunt 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 Jack Heckle from the oh, Skyline. Yes, oh. yes. No, no, it was way <laughs> further back, Rob, she, she auditioned for Biker Grove and she didn't get in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She and Dolly were meant for the part, but yeah. Ant and Deck got in. And, and Dolly, Dolly really loves Ant and Deck, and that she said, "I love you," and you know they. Oh. Her. <laughs> oh, you see, look at that. All together, <laughs> look at that. And I think, you know, how am I going to remember all this? Is the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, shall we go for? Um, let's just uh, nail down one little bit more of this setting, okay? Um, give me audience. Give me a building in Manchester, not necessarily. A building associated with Manchester, but any building that that could be in Manchester. Let's see what we get. We've got <laughs> is that the Polytechnic? Yeah, a curry house, the City Library, an abandoned hospital, That's Old good. Trafford, Football mu Museum, Canal Street, Mental Asylum, Manchester Dean's Gate, <laughs> Waterstones. Very good, very good. <laughs> Flower Factory. An Oasis Museum. <laughs> Sarah's just put place. <laughs> nice and specific. Uh, let's have... Oh, Adam, could you pick one of them for us, please? I want to pick mine, but I won't. <laughs> oh, is yours it? Oh, be the People's History Museum. Yeah, which is wonderful, by the way. If you've not been, make sure you get there. I think we will go with an abandoned hospital. Mm, good and a Excellent. Okay, so we know where <clears throat> um, Belinda is. She's in an abandoned hospital. And I'm going to go to our... We know she's hell-bent on revenge, or moreover, Dolly is hell-bent on revenge. I'm going to go to my tried and tested set here of Crime Writers Playbook. You know, like uh, in the Super Bowl the other night, they have all their plays written on their arm. Crime Writers, we do this. We refer to them every now and then. Oh, yeah, we can just chuck that in here right now. So... Audience, please could you give me a number one to eight? First one I see is the one that gets it. Oh, blame it. Four. Four is <laughs> a strong odour makes itself known. <laughs> Excellent stuff. And in an abandoned mental asylum, and there's a funny smell. Um, <laughs> I know, where do we go from here? Judith. What is it? It's um, it's a body of a small child because um, Belinda actually spent several years in the uh, abandoned hospital, which was then a psychiatric hospital, because she kept hearing voices. So the ventriloquism came out because the therapist gave her puppets to kind of talk out what was going on in her brain because the puppets say what she wants to say but can't goodness me but, uh, you know it's usually a joke when we say bestseller but i'm, I'm not so sure this this could, <laughs> that could be the one on shelves that summer fabulous stuff um this is uh, that suddenly we've got a lot of sympathy for belinda you know it's been growing the amount of sympathy that we've been developing here but now we've got serious sympathy so this body um how does she find it, Chris? Uh, follow her nose. Excellent. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, Trevor, where is the body? It's um, in the roof cavity. Wow. Wow. Uh, and Rob Scrag. How, just because there's a, like a big story point coming up here, isn't there? How did, how has Belinda come to be there? Uh, she woke up first thing that morning <clears throat> and uh, Dolly whispered in her ear that she wanted to take a bit of a road trip and, um, and told her where to go. This is astonishing. We've all gone quiet as well because this is, yep, yep, this is quite good. <laughs> so shockingly, this is quite good. <laughs> So what we'll do then, in which case, um, I think we have a setup, don't we, here? We have this ventriloquist has found, um, yes, this body. 
uh, let's bring in another crime writer's playbook to bring this plot along. Um, Davy, could I have a number one to eight, please? Not four. Six. <clears throat> Six. A gunshot rings out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're back on track. <laughs> um, audience, what is it? I think it's a gun, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes, they're all making a, a uh, it's a magnum, excellent. Oh, a recording being played, potato gun, a tire exploding. Some good answers here. An ex-black ops soldier. <laughs> excellent. Crazy psychiatrist locked in the basement. <laughs> and Bracken. <laughs> it's his stomping ground, isn't it? Uh, Howard, could you pick one for us, please? I think it's a recording being played and it's meant to scare you away if you get too close to the truth. I absolutely Very do. good, Howard. Yes. The truth. The We've truth. got a professional in the room here, haven't we? Yeah, it's no, not, not, a, you know, not a massive bestseller for nothing, dear in me. <laughs> um, is this now Scooby-Doo, asks Danny Marshall. <laughs> Dolly's mask is going to come off. <laughs> I could have got you. I could have got away with it too. <laughs> so, um, the, 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 the abandoned hospital is um, harboring a secret. It's uh, fantastic. I think now at this point, we've got a brilliant setup. I'm going to bring, a sec bring in a second character. Um, audience, give me a name, please. First name, uh, not, not first name. Let's see what we get first. <laughs> give, give me a name. Frank. Oh, Frank's a good one. Yasmin, VJ, Hugh, Mordecai. Lee, Dr. Bedford. I'm only reading the ones I see as the old ping past. Uh, Fiona, could you pick one, please, for our next character? Uh, Frank. Frank. I do like that. Frank. Uh, let's have a look on this. Uh, <laughs> let's have a look, you know. <laughs> uh, Trevor. <laughs> I'm disappointed you didn't choose Vienna, but maybe it means nothing to you. Oh. <laughs> oh. You see. Best in the oh. game right here. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Um, can I ask? Uh, let's go with uh, Judith. How old is Frank? He is uh, thirty-five. Frank is thirty-five. Um, Davy, what is his job or role in life? He is Ant and Dex manager. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Fabulous! Fabulous! Um, I was going to say, what is Frank's relation to Belinda? But I think <laughs> there's a whole, possibly a whole backstory of Belinda and Dolly's hate mail going in the direction of <laughs> Anton Deck that's been intercepted by Frank, maybe. I don't know. Um, but just going back slightly to Frank, um, Howard, what's, what's Frank's favourite genre of movies? Um, horror. Horror. Does he have a favourite of that particular gamut? Um... I was going to say psycho. That doesn't necessarily. It's kind of horror, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Crime. yeah. That's my. That's what I'm going to go for. I mean, that, I'm that... channeling a bit of Dolly and Bates's mother in the motel and that kind of thing. You know. <laughs> I, you know, I thought you were going to go with thriller with Silence of the Lambs, Howard. Well, yeah. I was. You know, I wrote that down. You bugger. I was going to say at the end, the Silence of the Lambs, <laughs> the Silence of the Sheep. <laughs> we'll get a seven-figure preempt from someone for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We should really check if we've got any, like, you know, high-flying editors in the chat once a week, you know, <laughs> to see whether our ideas are going to get rinsed. Um, what is... All right, then, here's, here's, here's interesting. Adam, what is Frank's kryptonite? Um, nuts. Oh, severe allergy. Aye. Excellent. <laughs> Danny Marshall says wool, which would come in handy possibly in the third act. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, Fiona, does, does Frank have a hobby? Hunting sheep. Does that count as a hobby? No, that's, 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 that's <laughs> No, um, <laughs> have a hobby. It's not a very <laughs> challenging hobby, Fiona, is it? Hunting sheep. <laughs> You graduate, don't you? You move up to something faster. <laughs> Start with sheep. Um, it's very entry-level sheep. He likes, he likes putting ships in bottles. 
Oh, cool. I still don't know how that's done. So maybe someone can tell me. Um, <laughs> my next question is, what is Frank's ideal Saturday night? And I thought managing Anton Deck is the <laughs> correct answer. <laughs> um, oh, uh, Judith, sorry. Have, have they ever been, has Frank ever been in love? Yeah. Uh, Frank was in love with a girl who um, died in a terrible motorcycle accident oh dear it's a lot of tragedy in tonight's story um does he have any uh, any children chris uh yes he does um that was my answer yes yeah i was gonna say you don't have to carry on the answer <laughs> um I, I will ask rob though rob is he still in touch with his children uh, he, he is, oh, yes, I was going to say he's Ant and Dex's father, but he's only, <laughs> he's only 35, isn't he? So he can't be. <laughs> That's where I was going, and I, I had to stop it. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, um, isn't one of his children the dead body in the, in the roof cavity? Ooh. Oh, good shout. This is all flying together a little bit. Good so, now. He could be in well. touch if he's got a Ouija board. Yeah. Um... Audience, uh, Frank, when he's in his bedroom, why do I go to the, the, with the bedroom stuff always to the audience? I don't know why it works out like this. A psychologist would have a field day with you, Rob. I know, they really would. They really would. Um, what three things are in their bottom bedside drawer right now? So when, let's see. Oh, so, I think are we asking the audience? Was it? Yeah, we're asking the audience. Dolly, <laughs> dumbbells. Shipping a bottle and, and what well, I can't read the last one. <laughs> I can't read that, Effie. I'm so sorry. Uh, a photo of Susan Boy. <laughs> or Mary Berry, apparently. Lighter smokes and whiskey. I like these. I like these. Um, Celery. <laughs> <laughs> Rod Hull's biography. More Rudy stuff, I can't say. And a book <laughs> of jams. Um, a gun, I like that. Miniaturated. Whew, I, I don't go in. I'm not allowed to answer, really, am I? But I do like a couple of these. Um, Davey, could you, could you pick our first item, please, from, from what's come up on the chat? Oh, sorry, we can't go to the chat on an iPad, can we? Or can yeah, we? I can see it. I, I can see it now. <clears throat> um, oh, can you pick one for us? Yes, I will. And I'll go through those very quickly and find something that's crimey <laughs> and spur with me um okay uh oh god where are we <laughs> a late entry with some edam a lighter and a bible oh i like the, I like all three actually a magnum and that's a gun not an ice cream I'd yes assume. yeah <laughs> excellent we'll take right we'll take magnum for the first item that's in there which is a it's am i right i think it's a massive handgun that isn't it <laughs> so he's not messing around, is Frank? Uh, Trevor, could you give us from the um, uh, from the options? Can you give us another one? Uh, I'm choosing the uh, Willy Warmer. <laughs> is that just because you want me to say it out loud? Yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> I thought you should have said it the first time. Thank you very much. Well, I don't, I, it's because I don't know what one of those is. I mean, <laughs> what is one of those? It doesn't take a great leap of imagination, Rob. <laughs> I'm think, think of something knitted out of wool. But why? Why? <laughs> It'll be made out of dollies. Not the way I. Yeah, this is. <laughs> Someone explain to me in the after show, please. <laughs> in your, Rob, in your case, it's like a very small woolen thimble. Don't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> the abuse, honestly. <laughs> um, there's a, right. So there's a Magnum, a Willy Warmer, whatever one of those is. And uh, that delivery was for you, Trevor, that. <laughs> and uh, Judith, could you pick our last item, please? I like the old fob watch. I like that too. Yeah. I like that too. It speaks of a bit of a, a medical background as well, doesn't it? Um, uh, excellent stuff. So we've got three things there. Oh, we'll do one more. Um, Howard, what's, the most what's Frank's most treasured possession in all the world? Um, he's, got a, he's got a rabbit's foot, but, and he takes it everywhere with him. But to slightly complicate matters, it's still attached to the rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's not as portable as it could be. The <laughs> <from Mario. laughs> so he has to have a little shoulder bag to put the rabbit in. 
I love that the only complaint about this guy hoiking a dead rabbit round was its portability issues. <laughs> You're assuming it's dead, Rob. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> it will be after it's stuffed in the bag for a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Fiona, have, uh, have Belinda and Frank met before? Yes. They have. When she was auditioning for, for the show oh, and... Um, when Dolly was declaring her love for Anton Deck, and Frank just laughed. This is this is dreadful. So we've got have we got a villain here all of a sudden? Frank could even have sabotaged her audition to let Anton Deck get the role. Oh, it's all coming together, uh, and it just so happens that Belinda. You can see the cogs whirring here. <laughs> Belinda is was did go to the same hospital as his now deceased daughter. Is that right? Or have I jumped? The only, the only problem with that is Linda's 55 and he's 35-ish. Yes. So his daughter. Belinda was a child when she found the body. In... Well, did, did we specify that Belinda was a patient? Yeah. Oh, we did specify that. Mm. Okay. Oh, I thought she found the body in the present day. I was totally confused. Yeah, yeah, so yeah right. she found the body, the but the body, the body was her like, you know, fellow inmate when she was a kid. We could change it in the um, edit though, guys. We can well, change it. Yeah. Yeah. Then. And, and it Frank, a... Frank was a bit of a player. I mean, you know, he started early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm getting there. I'll get it right, brilliant. Uh, when, when I do the wrap up and tie it all together, if I go off the rails, please pull me back in. <laughs> Put me back on the straight and narrow. <laughs> got here, maybe Frank is Belinda's child, who she abandoned when he was a baby. That's from Anne. That's a great shout. That's a very good shout. Um, all right, let's, we've got, what have we got? Oh, we've not got that much long before we've got to tie this up. <laughs> no, no, I've got a working title. Oh. How about well, let's get ready to rumble? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not sold on it, but you know, as a word. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, you know, we're getting permission from um, Anton Deck for this. <laughs> uh, I love we it. We got a story this for could, you, Anton this, Deck. This could make them. It could make <laughs> them both. <laughs> this could be the break they've been waiting for. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, Right, let's have a look at ending, because I always think that if you've got the beginning and, you know, and you've got the ending, you can tie the two together, and we can tie that to, you know, I can do that in the rundown in a little bit. So let's sort out an ending, but let's decide what kind of an ending we're going to have. So, um, Davey, what kind of ending do you think this will be? Do you think it'll be a happy ending, sad ending, twist ending, shock ending, cliffhanger, um, uh, the kind of ending that everyone says on Twitter the following day, oh, did you see that? I suppose that could be any of them. Twist. A twist ending. I love that because that gives the challenge to the audience and our authors to what that twist might be. So we all see it, don't we, on the books, like um, with a twist that you'll never see coming, you know, or the best twist of the year. So we know, you know, again, this is only adding to its bestseller state. No one's going to see this twist coming, including us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> very true. <laughs> no pressure, but you know. <laughs> no pressure, everyone. <laughs> so, can we just look at the motivations for a moment? Um, <laughs> Linda um, is trying to go about life, but she's found this body. But she's also got a revenge bent um, hand puppet who really wants revenge on Anton Deck. But the manager is here, who is sort of the next best thing. Um, and he just so happens to have all sorts of links to um, Belinda and this particular hospital. I am going to ask for the name of the hospital as well, please. Actually, I'm going to ask that now. Audience, can you, can you name this hospital for me, please? Or this asylum? Um, and you can really stretch your... <laughs> Parkside's a good, uh, a good one. Mank Madness. <laughs> Ben's End is a good one. Good... <laughs> Donnelly McPartland Park, that's very good. <laughs> Nay Hope, very good. St. Dolly's Sanatorium. <laughs> I can't read that. I can't read that one out. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Scrag, could you give us one, please, from that list where this is all taking place? Uh, well, let me scroll back through them. Um, I... <laughs> 
I quite, uh, I quite like Donnelly <laughs> McFarlane Park, but I don't know if that's going to be too complicated to tie back in because the hospital's been there before the, the beef <laughs> with Atten Deck. Yeah. So uh, I, I think I'll, I'll go with uh, St Mary's. Thank you. And there is absolutely no way I would be able to see, say Donnelly McPartlin <laughs> in a little bit quick. So thank you for sparing me there, Rob. So let's just say, for argument's sake, that this is where our story is going to end. We've got actually, Rob, our... can, I, can I change my choice, actually? Because I've just seen Danny's. I prefer Danny's. What is the, that? The, the Rod Hull Hospital for the criminally insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so this is the bit where it's mad. Honestly, audience, authors, I can tell you, this is the bit where tying it together in my shoes, when you've got all, all this information, it is <laughs> quite something. So we want to end this. Who's going to come out on top? Uh, Judith, who's going who's gonna to get what they want here? Belinda. Belinda is going to get, but what is it that Belinda wants, though? Can Belinda I, wants, mate. Do you want a twist? I want a twist, I'll yeah. You out. A twist is she's not actually seeking revenge on both Ant and Deck, although Frank thinks she is and is trying to silence her. She wants to seek revenge against one of Ant and Deck because she fell in love with the other. She was a little bit older than them, but show business and the manager robbed her of a happy ending with the one she loved. And it drove her insane. This is it. Does that start you off? <laughs> this is it. I think, you know. Show you the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you about wrap it up here. <laughs> can, I give you, can I give you a curveball here, Rob? Yes. I think the body is Belinda. Oh! Mm. oh! And <laughs> the person who is ventriloquizing with the sheep, it's like a sort of picture of Dorian Gray in reverse. So <laughs> the baby stays in the attic. Wow, the ghost of Belinda. Is that, is that too bonkers? No. We, so we've come up with like a, almost like a, a gothic crime horror blockbuster. This is heading for Netflix, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely for Netflix. Netflix, you know, <laughs> tag them in, tag them in seriously. Yeah, Danny's right. Nothing is too bonkers for this. Wow. So, but Belinda gets what she, what's, what's, yeah, gets what she wants, though, doesn't she? Which is Chris McGeorge. What is it Belinda gets in the end? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Bele which Belinda are we talking about? <laughs> Whoever's left. <laughs> the ghost, or um, uh, well, the sheep, the sheep dummy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yes, let's go with that. All right, the sheep puppet. Uh, okay, Fr <laughs> okay. So Frank, so so Frank gets incapacitated. Um, <laughs> the sheep um, leaps from this person's hand uh, and crawls inside Frank, and she has a body to possess now. Um, inside Frank, how does it enter Frank? <laughs> <laughs> through, through the mouth. <laughs> through the mouth. <laughs> and Frank obviously has a heart attack at this point. And yeah, um, <laughs> renders his body. So, so then the then the the sheep is ventriloquizing Frank. So it's a total, it's a total 180. Um, it's the hero's journey, really. That's what it is. Um, but it not, <laughs> not it was actually yeah. made from Dolly's wall. Oh my, yeah, print this. Yeah, close, <laughs> print, absolutely brilliant. Um, I mean, am I right? All, all the characters are taken care of there, aren't they? Everything's tied up. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking no at, loose ends at all there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're looking at quarter past. Quarter past is my cut-off point where I've got to wrap things up to move on to the next bit. Um, all we need to know is, um, <laughs> oh, look at that title. Karen yeah, we've got a new title. Hospital. Sorry, She's I'm giving inside up. you, spelled E-W-E. <laughs> <laughs> um, how are we going to get, get better than that? I don't <laughs> <laughs> can't top it <clears throat> can't top it right we'll call we'll call that there i usually ask the audience to come up with titles but you we're not going to get any any uh, that's just outrageous <laughs> um 
I'm sorry, Trevor, your title of Let's Get Ready to Rumble. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tagline now, Rob. It's a tagline. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. See, all like the it. creative minds and, and process come to the table. I, I, I bow to she's, she's inside you. That's oh, well, brilliant. brilliant. Um, to to summarise, uh, um, there is next summer a blockbuster event coming to supermarket shelves near you and it's called it well it is the horror gothic crime blockbuster she's inside you which is the story of 55 year old belinda who is a ventriloquist on the blackpool ventriloquism circuit and um through um a chance moment one morning waking up, she realizes that it's her destiny to travel to Manchester to visit um, the, what was it? St. Mary's Hospital. We I think it was the, the Rod Hull. Oh yeah, we changed it, sorry. <laughs> yeah, the Rod Hull the Rod Asylum Hull. for the Criminally Insane, <laughs> where <laughs> with her, um, well, her, her essentially her mouthpiece, Dolly, um, cruel life events fractured Belinda's um, psychology into a number of pieces, which she um, acts out with her with her ventriloquism work. But the most prominent voice is that of a particular stuffed sheep called Dolly. And Dolly, it is Dolly who has sent her on this mission today. And uh, on breaking into um, the Rod Hull Centre. <laughs> I can't say that seriously. That's absolutely ridiculous. Um, on breaking on, into the hospital, um, he she um, follows her nose. There is a, a peculiar odor in there, and uh, she finds uh, very sadly in the roof space um, above the top floor the body um, of a deceased young girl. And um, this brings about. Um, through a stunning turn of events that you will have to read to believe, the manager of Anton Deck, <laughs> a man called Frank, who also has his own very twisted um, connection to the hospital um, and also to the moment in uh, Belinda's past which split her personalities to pieces. Um, Belinda was love struck, she was love lorn, and she wanted to be famous. And she wanted Ant, but Deck found this hilarious. And with um, Frank, the manager, conspired to dash Belinda's hopes in the cruelest way possible. And it was actually in that moment that Dolly was born, hell bent on revenge against Frank and to a lesser extent, television personalities, Ant and Deck. <laughs> um, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> Um, in a staggering denouement um, and a confrontation for the ages um, with a twist that you will never see coming, uh, the, um, it's revealed that, in fact, the body uh, of the young girl is Belinda herself. And it's Dolly, this disembodied spirit, uh, this disembodied fractured ghost of uh, Belinda that is carrying on... Uh, uh, that is the protagonist of this story and seeking her next conduit, so to speak, her next vessel. She dives into Frank's mouth and becomes him in, uh, in a scenes that will keep you awake long into the night. That is, uh, what do we call it? She's inside, inside, you. Inside, you. inside you. Well done audience. Well done. Uh, <laughs> Well done, authors. Uh, huge thank you uh, to uh, guest Davian Howard. That wasn't too bad, was it? Yeah. That was enjoyable. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> madness. <stuff. laughs> you know, in lockdown, there's probably weirder ways to spend a Tuesday night. <laughs> we've just not found them yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've not got there yet. Um, I'm just going to have a look here at the Q&A. If you've got any questions you'd like to fire to uh, any of our authors, but especially Davian Howard while we've got them, please uh, let us know. We've got... Um, Anne Blockswitch here, One, once again, congratulations to you, Anne. That is fabulous news you've uh, told us this week. We're all delighted for you. Um, but Anne asks, Davey, where can I buy your book? She'd like to know where she can get a hold of The Art of Death. Um, you can get it in any bookshop. Um, so uh, any, anywhere that's doing online sales, um, and 
you know, if you go to bookshop.org, you can buy it there. Um, or if you want to go to Amazon, yeah, uh, get it there. It's uh, it's entirely up to you. Um, you know, whatever your bookshop is, your poison. <laughs> Excellent. So widely available. Wherever you uh, go get your books, you'll be able to get Out of Death by David Fennell. Um, I see Wahid would like to ask um, both of you, could you name one of your favourite characters in any of your books? Howard, I'll start with yourself if I could, please. All right. Hi, Asim. Now you're well, mate. Good to hear from you. Um, yeah, probably David Blake, who is um, just like me, except he's taller, better looking, tougher has better, more brains, more money, um, and has the life that I would like if I was a gangster. So he's my, uh, the, the complete antithesis of me, actually, the tough guy who wanders around Newcastle, getting into scrapes and getting out of them again. So I'm quite partial to him. He was my first main character. Fabulous. Great answer. What about you, David? Favourite character? Oh, well, um, uh, probably my killer. <laughs> oh, really? Um, yeah. Whose who's name I won't reveal, but he, he he's a, an underground artist who goes under the name of anonymous but the, the a is a nut symbol um so yeah he he was I, I i do done a lot of chapters in this book from his perspective um so he was a lot of fun to write you know and those those creepy characters normally are you know and that's a um yeah, yeah i suppose yeah. in a way i quite like him well, no, that's a cool answer and something i can you know i think we can all because we talked at length the group of us about this about how um, stepping aside from the norm and writing something with the gloves off is, can be tremendously exciting. Um, we've got another question here from uh, Andreas. Um, what are you reading now? Uh, David, while well, we've got you, David, can I stick with you? What are you reading? Well, that's a really good question. Um, um, because I'm writing my second book, I, I generally don't read crime when I'm um, writing. Um, but I, uh, I do read, and, and I'm actually reading Game of Thrones. Um, right. And I've been reading Game of Thrones' first book for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> it is rather meaty, and isn't it? it well, it's brilliant, and he's such a superb writer. Um, you know, and I and I read his stuff, and I kind of learn. And but the thing is, you know, because I'm such a fan of the TV show, I know where I am. So I can go back two years after leaving off at chapter twelve and go, "Oh yeah, I know where this is now." You know, <laughs> and I don't need to read back. You know, so it's a and I, and it's um. It's really, yeah, I, I love it. I love yeah, it. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. And um, what about you, Howard? What are you reading at the minute? Um, weirdly, I'm, I'm reading a lot of nonfiction at the moment because I'm doing some research for a book set in a, in a previous time and um, I've had to get really immersed in it. Um, I want to come out of it and start reading the stuff on my to read pile instead, but so I'm, I'm researching a story set in 1590, which oh, isn't wow. exactly, you know, my comfort zone and it may never see the light of day. It's the thing I'm writing when I should be writing other things, you know, do you ever do that where yeah, yeah. you have a deadline and you, in your, in your, if you have any time to one side, you think, I really want to write this as well. And so I'm doing the research on that. And uh, as I say, it may never come to anything, but I'm jotting down stuff as I go. And by the end of the day, I'm knackered from writing and reading that. So I need to read more for leisure and read more crime fiction again and get back into that. Definitely. Oh, that's amazing. Um, Rob, 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 can I jump in? Of course you can, yeah. Because I can get a plug in as well, because I'm reading Ellie Griffith's new book, The Nighthawks. Excellent. Uh, which I believe, seeing on Twitter today, has jumped to number two on the Sunday Times bestseller list immediately. But wow, um, Adam and I are talking to her on Sunday Fabulous. for the next Northern Crime Syndicate podcast. So Excellent. look out she's for that. Lovely as well. Really supportive. Oh, yeah, she's really amazing, lovely. isn't she? Yeah, she's brilliant. Yeah, oh, that's, that's brilliant. Just very quickly, can I ask uh, the other authors what, what you're reading? Uh, Adam, what are you reading? I feel you're going to ask me that. And I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of reading two books, but the one that I'm actually reading, well, that I read most recently, I can't remember the title, so I'll go with the other one. And I'm pretty sure I'll get the title wrong on this. Is it Russ Thomas, um, Firewatcher? Yeah. Firewatching. Uh, Firewatching, yeah. Firewatching, yeah. Because essentially, um, it seems he is me and wrote the same book. So uh, <laughs> i got to see, um, see what that's all about. So I'm quite enjoying that. It's... Uh, Good crack. We'll try and get him on the podcast soon, I think. For anybody who hasn't, just to shamelessly plug it, I guess, we just had Will Dean on on the last episode as well. So if you search out Northern Crime Syndicate podcast online or on Spotify or whatever, then that's there for you to listen to. And we've had Howard on as well. So you yeah. have to check the episode out too. Fabulous. Yeah. Brilliant. <clears throat> I'll get on to it. Um, Judith, what about you? What are you reading? I've just started this. Oh, excellent. Mm -hmm. and have, you gone, have you gone in at uh, number 14 then, Davey? 
Yes, yes, I have. <laughs> oh, Deb, that, massive congratulations. <clears throat> That's fabulous news. Yeah, it's quite staggering, actually. Um, and it's a, yeah, re really good news. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's amazing. A huge congratulations from us all. That's Thank absolutely you. brilliant. Um, brilliant. Uh, Fiona, what about you? What are you reading? I'm reading Abigail Dean, uh, Girl A, which Ooh, is right. fantastic. I'm yes. not a great misery memoir uh, fan, but it's so well written and it's really exciting and uh, just beautifully constructed. Um, brilliant. So it's a cracker. Yeah, it, it's very good, isn't it? Very yeah. good. Uh, superb. Chris, what about you? What are you reading, mate? Uh, well, actually, I'm halfway through uh, Danny Marshall's Amphrax Island at Ooh. the moment, uh, which is... I, I can't describe it, really, because I, I don't even know where it's going to go, because it seems to have recontextualized itself like three times already. <laughs> so I don't... I, it, it seems like he wrote this book just for me so thank you for that because it's oh, amazing, amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but I, I i'm just so in love with it uh at the moment uh i mean it, it could balls it up but you know <laughs> for I mean, now it's it's alert, fantastic it, spoiler alert it doesn't no, yeah it doesn't, really. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> yeah. amazing so far amazing. Oh, that's so good to hear so what yeah. about you trevor I think I just told you I'm reading Ellie Griffiths' book. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but I, and tell you again, Rob, if you want. It's fine. <laughs> it's Ellie Griffiths' book, yeah. And she's, on the, good, you can tell us she's on the podcast. She's on the podcast. Live week. television phone, you know. <laughs> Ant and Deck haven't got anything on this. Uh, what about you, Rob? What about you? What are you reading? Uh, I've got three on the go at the minute. So I'm listening to um, 112263 by Stephen King, um, which is... Uh, it's, it's, it's it is rather good. I'm about halfway through. It's a, quite a meaty one. Um, on my Kindle, I'm reading The Last House on Needless Street by um, Katriona Ward. And then I'm just about to start this one. Oh, cool. I got through the post oh, yeah. this week, yeah. which has one of the most intriguing premises I've seen for a while. Um, Five Minds by uh, a chap called Guy M Morpus. Yeah, fabulous. That's good. fabulous. Oh, it's amazing. Absolutely brilliant. What a good spread. Uh, for myself, I'm reading, um, when, I, when I'm writing and I'm really deep into the uh, draft for um, Far From, the sequel to Far From the Tree, um, I try and read the, the, you know, the people that inspire you. Just, you know. um, so at the moment, I'm reading the Cartel Trilogy by Don Winslow as I'm writing and, and just really reading it and then going, oh my God, this is that is super of anything of what <laughs> yeah, super like i can't even breathe this is so good um but um certainly the third one which i'm at the moment the border um i am really enjoying um his particular take on a well-known ex-us president i'm enjoying that a lot <laughs> um so yeah superb we've got another couple of quick questions here we've got three minutes to go um Let's go back to Howard and Davy. Um, Catherine asks, um, "How long an average does it take you to write a first draft?" Um, Davy, let's start with yourself. <clears throat> well, um, probably like the rest, of you guys, you'd be thinking about um, your book probably weeks, months before you start writing it, <clears throat> and certainly I do. So once I got the idea in my head and I jot down a beginning, middle, and end. Um, and a bit of a plan, which I sometimes do, but never stick to. Um, it can take eight months to a year to write the first draft. Um, I, I tend to edit as I go sometimes, which is, I know which people say you don't, but I, but to hell with what people say, you do what's right for you. So that's why it can take me up to that long, sometimes eight. Um, and I'm generally working, I have a full-time job as well, so I'm generally finding time in between my my normal job so yeah cool absolutely cool yeah um it's it, i love that um what you mentioned there about because i never think about that the the percolation time for an idea mm -hmm. before you actually do anything um it's a very real thing isn't it mm -hmm. um howard what about yourself yeah I, I totally agree on that one it can take years for an idea sometimes to bubble away and then you, you have the they're almost like little rooms in your head so you can take an idea out eventually and start writing it. Um, I've, I've got a bit faster over the years, really, mainly because when you're, when you're contracted to do one a year, you sort of have to be. So in the early days, it used to take me a long time and I had a day job and I don't even know what the... I, I didn't really think about how long it took. I just, you know, soldiered on with it till it was done. Um, but I, because I have to get a book in um, out every year, 
I'll try and do a first draft within six months because then it will go back and forth a bit with my editor. So, and that's, that's loosely then, but um, I try to, I, I've never missed a deadline. So I try and treat it a bit like a journalist and work hard to hit a deadline and not ever go beyond one for a, even for a draft. Um, and I need the time as well. I need that couple of weeks off while my editor's reading it and coming back with thoughts and suggestions and what have you. And sometimes in the early stages, it's just a question of getting some words down. So even if I'm not entirely sure what the plot is going to be, I'll have an ending in mind. But obviously beginning, but the middle bits are all over the place. So I'll just write some scenes and get some chapters down and <clears throat> try and build some momentum. And those those bits I write will lead to other ideas as well. So it, it hopefully, <laughs> so far it hasn't failed me, but every time I panic and think I'm not going to get there, you know. Um, so slightly less so each year, but um, there's always a little bit of panic at the end there that you think you're not going to, you're not going to finish it. Um, oh, yeah. but, uh, touch wood. That word is brilliant. Momentum is a great word because some days you can, you can fly and then you can fly into the next day and then fly into the day after that. And then the tap somehow wobbles, doesn't it? And it, it, yeah. it starts to drip. I don't understand how it works. And oh. that thing you said, Davey, about um, whatever works for you is whatever works, isn't it? You know, just however you get the words down is, is how it's got to be done. Um, I, we've got two questions left. If you don't mind, I'd like to try and answer them if that's all right. So we can, but no more questions, please, folks. Um, first one's a quick one. Anne asked me if there's a child standing behind me with a playing card in their hand. No, Anne, there is no, you can't freak me out anymore. It's not. <laughs> the story we did tonight, freaky enough. Thank you very much. Uh, but Elodie asks, um, for all the authors, do you tend to use the crime writer's bag of tricks, number tropes, then pick a random number for your own books? <laughs> I, I mean, if I could they read that like up. that. <laughs> it, what was that, Judith? Sorry. Do they read like that? <laughs> yes. Is that, how it, is that what it seems like? <laughs> um, no, most definitely, just to kick off, I did, I did write, write in my new one. I did think like, right, something needs to happen here now. And I looked at the cast of characters and decided who could die. So yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of that. Um, but anyone else want to weigh in? I'll, I'll reread, I'll reread uh, on an edit. Um, I'm just, you know, look at it and go, I, I want, I think it's a bit dull. So I'm going to put a twist or a reversal or something exciting you know, in a certain place, but, but not a sort of trope. Mm. Yeah. Not really one of the, the tropes is just that you've got in your bag of tricks there, Rob, but for me, it's, it's more, the bit that I tend to go back to is the, the endings of chapters, because for me, that's, I, I want as many of them as possible to, to leave you with like a, oh God, what happens next? And, you know, it's, as I'm, if I'm going at pace, that doesn't always happen. So I do have to go back and think, actually, that one doesn't make me want to turn the page. That one doesn't make me want to turn the page. I need to tweak these and change these. Mm. Yeah, I think it's all good advice. This. I go with um, Raymond Chandler, Robbie just said, you know, if you're struggling, have a man walk in with a gun. That, that yeah. does me every time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why those things, I mean, we have a lot of fun with those ideas of the tropes and the playbook and that kind of stuff. But, um, it's if something does ever appear like a cliche it's always nice to have fun with a cliche you might as well embrace them you know so and my word do they get a story moving so anyway thank you all uh, for attending today everyone in the audience um you make events like these they don't work without you thank you for getting involved and uh, being such good sports yourselves um and uh, thank you also davy and howard for joining us tonight it's been great to have you with us Thanks, guys. Um, it's yes, been you. everyone out there please go out there and, and buy their books uh, while you're at it if you can squeeze a bit over to the northern crime syndicate as well that'd be great yeah <laughs> davy's got them there and uh, uh, well, we all know Howard's as well. So um, thank you all so much. To my uh, fellow authors in the Northern Crime Syndicate, thanks again for letting me, uh, uh, well, play with your careers. <laughs> <laughs> Here's all. Tell everyone uh, you had a good time. Remember the hashtag one hour bestseller. And uh, yeah, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you very soon. And I'm off not to Google what a Willy Warmer is.